Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. The tourism satellite account officially launched. Students from the Caribbean School of Architecture in Jamaica visit St. Lucia. CAFA deems risk of exportation of the coronavirus to the Caribbean as low. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. The tourism satellite account TSA was officially launched on Monday. The TSA is the main tool for the economic measurement of tourism, providing credible data on the impact of tourism in St. Lucia and the associated employment. More in this report. The Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries on Monday officially launched the tourism satellite account TSA. The TSA is a standard statistical framework and the main tool for the economic measurement of tourism. It provides credible data on the impact of tourism and the associated employment. It also provides St. Lucia's balance of payments and information on tourism human resource characteristics. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, indicated that the TSA is very important in the process of designing economic policies related to tourism development. Tourism is simply a development tool. It is how we uh, raise revenues through our government to uh, invest in social services, such as schools and hospitals and roads and playing fields all those necessary infrastructure things that people require to have a good quality of life and to advance our country. And so this exercise of um, the tourism satellite to count is of tremendous importance. It's a windfall um, policy uh, achievement uh, for our government and for indeed um, St. Lucia, the industry of tourism and the people of St. Lucia. Um, it gives policymakers a better opportunity to make informed decisions. The implementation of the TSA serves to increase and improve knowledge of tourism's importance relative to overall economic activity to St. Lucia, assist in the development of more efficient tourism policies and employment, and creating awareness among the various players directly and indirectly involved in the tourism sector of its economic importance and by extension its role in all industries involved in the production of goods and services demanded by visitors which include the agriculture sector. Donald Invite is the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries. We have gotten to the point where tourism has been dynamically improving and increasing by leaps and bounds on St. Lucia and other Caribbean islands. So it's incumbent on us, it's incumbent on policymakers, and we welcome the charge to ensure that we're able to put out research and evidence-based reporting on tourism in the various subsectors and generally its performance on our as an economic driver to be able to inform proper policy development and planning. And so hopefully in the coming months and years when tourism starts to advocate a little strongly for the various principles on the various equipment, assets, infrastructure and other infrastructure, whether it be legal policy and other matters, that we are able to back it up with the evidence that is required for persons to understand the importance. Chief Executive Officer of the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association, Nurani Aziz, highlighting the country's dependence on the tourism sector, indicated that information is key to making the right decisions so as to benefit not only the sector but the people of St. Lucia. It is only by measuring this growth and interdependence accurately can we know for sure what the true impact of tourism really is. And only by measuring tourism accurately can we capture the intelligence to drive innovation and creativity to fully extract the promises of tourism. Tourism satellite account has become the standard bearer and the main tool for the economic measurement of tourism. Developed by the World Tourism Organization, the United Nations Statistics Division, and a few other global partners, the TSA allows for the harmonization and reconciliation of tourism statistics, helping us to measure the consumption of goods and services by visitors and the domestic supply of goods and services to meet this demand. We have come to realize that growth in arrivals is one thing, 
but growth in visitor exp expenditure can be quite another. Statistician from the St. Lucia Central Statistical Office, Anno Lafay, provided insight into the TSA. Having compiled the data, what occurs is we are the, the Central Statistics Office together with Stats Canada, PRASAC. Okay, we're going to compile this data using statistical methods, okay? And we're going to apply the ne these necessary methods to create a tourism satellite account. <coughs> it must be noted that confidentiality is a very important element or a very important thing for we at the CSO. And a number of checks and balances have been in place to ensure that your information or the information from businesses remain private. The TSA was developed by the World Tourism Organization, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Statistical Office of the European Communities, and the United Nations Statistics Division. An annual educational tour sees a group of students from the Caribbean School of Architecture in Jamaica coming to St. Lucia with a view of studying the local architecture. Anissia Antoine has the details. As part of an educational tour done every year, a contingent of 44 students from the Caribbean School of Architecture in Jamaica visited St. Lucia to study the local architecture of the country. The tour is a requirement for third-year and fourth-year students in completing their bachelor's degree. Andre Bo, program director at the Caribbean School of Architecture, noted that the students are coming in with fresh insight, which can be beneficial to the country. What we've found, and what a lot of them will, will tell you, is that they, they, they feel like the city has a lot of potential for growth, and perhaps what really needs to happen within the city is a reinvigoration of entertainment and housing. To, in order to have the city not be dead at night, you see, one of the key components mm -hmm. is a mixed-use city, which attracts people to, to not only visit, but want to come and stay and live and work. And we all know, being part of the Caribbean, our cities have serious traffic problems. So if everyone's coming to Castries for work, we need very attractive housing communities with not just the housing blocks, but the amenities that go with housing. You see, it's not, it's not enough to just put housing. It, you know, we need places for entertainment. We need places that are not just about the tourists. You see, our cities must first be designed for the people. And once it's successful for the people, then it will become a major tourist attraction. Bo noted that as part of the assignment, the students will be designing 40 buildings in Castries, including theatres, museums and police headquarters. The contingent presented the findings of the study tour to architectural students, urban planners and local architects at the Safa Lewis Community College. Kurt Harris is the Dean of the Division of Technical Educational Management Studies at SALCC. The presence of the School of Architecture here in, in St. Lucia is really to help, one, them attain their goals as it relates to their final project, but also to get our students to get an improved learning experience and to also give them that insight into what they can get into if they further their studies. Um, when you look at the amount of work that has been done within one week, it speaks to the quality of the, the learning experience that they have at the Caribbean School of Architecture. And it also speaks to the amount of dedication that those students have to put in that much work and get that quality of work out in one week's time. Kenyatta Burt, finally a student of the Caribbean School of Architecture, stated that the experience has been exceptional. So far this presentation is going well. And um, if this analysis goes well, it only leads to us designing um, better and more interesting um, architectural buildings. And um, I, I think I can speak for my classmates in saying that, you know, we are very confident about um, um, our studies thus far. The presentation of the findings took place on Thursday, February 13th, 2020, at the Safa Lewis Community College. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. As the Caribbean region continues to heighten its level of preparedness in the face of the coronavirus COVID-19, the Caribbean Public Health Agency CAFA deems the risk of exportation of the coronavirus to the Caribbean as low. More in this report. Even though the World Health Organization has declared the novel coronavirus a public health emergency of international concern, 
The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, deems the risk to the Caribbean as low. The novel coronavirus has been detected in two other countries in the region of the Americas, that is the USA and Canada. Assistant Director for Surveillance and Disease Prevention Control at CARFA, Dr. Lisa Endar, said the likelihood of someone coming from China with the virus to the Caribbean is very low. The coronavirus is similar to when we were preparing for SARS. Mm -hmm. So in terms of capacity, the region has built their capacity uh, in terms of emergency preparedness and response. So in terms of laboratory capacity, in terms of response. So every country has an emergency and response plan. So they, this is not something new. Mm -hmm. uh, viruses come and go. Um, so they know what to do. So it's a matter of, um, you know, taking it off, dusting it off. And, you know, um, just like SARS, it's the same type of response. Every country has response teams. They have a triage of how the information should flow. If you do have a suspect case, what do you do? If you have to isolate, how you isolate? The only difference is that to isolate this, you may need different primaries or media. And that's something COPPA is already getting. So what we're really encouraging our member states is to ramp up ports of entry screening. The first thing is to avoid that importation. So we have to be even more careful in terms of you know, being vigilant at our ports of entry. And the other thing we want to encourage is for the immigration department to also ramp up vigilance to interpro to ask the questions yeah. in terms of travel. The Council for Human and Social Development on Health agreed to begin drafting a communication strategy to combat misinformation on the virus. They also agreed on the need for a coordinated approach to port of entry screening, even as member states initiate actions to reduce the risk of the coronavirus entering their jurisdiction. This is NTN Nightly. We will be back in a moment. St. Lucia, let's celebrate our 41st Independence Anniversary with a musical explosion. Friday, 21st February at 7 p.m., the City Center comes alive at the Best of St. Lucia Concerts. Enjoy performances, our best from the past and present. Invader, Ashanti, Herb Black, T. Caro, Arthur, Michael Robinson, Tennyson John, Ricky T, Subans, and many more amazing talents will take Stage. Welcome back. The training division of the Department of the Public Service has been embarking on a series of training programs primarily focused on report writing, an area which has been identified as requiring attention. It is the division's mandate to ensure that the right training is made available to government employees in keeping with their training and development needs. In that vein, the division has conducted a number of five-day report writing training programs targeting the bodily correctional facility, the St. Lucia Fire Service, and technical officers. Members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force are the focus group for the period of January to March 2020. The training is geared toward assisting participants in recognizing and applying the steps required from start to end in report writing identifying the best methods for constructing reports, effectively and strategically communicating with stakeholders, managing, interpreting, and communicating key messages to a range of target groups, developing the knowledge and the practical skills required to produce effective documents and reports, and understanding and applying the structure of the report document. The training division is hopeful that upon completion of the program, participants would have acquired the abilities to combine appropriate data and critical reasoning skills to draft logical and well-reasoned reports that are coherent and persuasive. The program outline covers the following areas. The report, definition and purpose, the internal memorandum, the formal report, techniques, the classical arrangements, drafting and revising the report. The Caribbean Community CARICOM's Chairman and Prime Minister of Barbados, Honorable Mia Motley, recently visited Guyana. CARICOM News Times to San King English Francis tells us more. Chairman of CARICOM Prime Minister Mia Motley of Barbados was in Guyana on Monday the 3rd of February to fulfill a packed agenda. Prime Minister Motley and the CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin LaRock stopped briefly at the funeral service of Guyanese legal luminary Mr. Baimo Pollard. They paid respects to Mr. Pollard's family and signed the Book of Condolence. During her visit to Guyana, 
Prime Minister Motley engaged with members of the Executive Management Committee of the CARICOM Secretariat. She met with the Secretariat's staff and expressed appreciation for their efforts in delivering the benefits of integration to the people of the community. How is it that what we are doing can make a difference to being able to change the course of the destiny, not of our countries alone, but of individuals, individual families, individual communities, and individual companies. I've come here, therefore, conscious that the people who come to work every day, every day, to make this reality, our reality, are primarily you in this secretariat. And therefore, first and foremost, I want to thank you for your continued commitment to a project that many have doubted is capable of surviving. Your role in this Secretariat is to help us transmit that message, help us develop the systems that are necessary to make our citizens' lives easier. As Guyana prepares to hold regional and general elections on the 2nd of March, Prime Minister Motley and the Secretary General paid a courtesy call on the leader of the opposition at his office in Georgetown, Guyana. The Chairman and the Secretary General also met with several private sector representatives. The CARICOM Chairman ended her visit to Guyana with an interaction with the media. She told the media that regional integration needs to be carried and sustained to ensure that future generations benefit. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next is Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. St. Lucia on the move to improve. It's time to unite for the sake of tourism. We need to restaurants, store operators, taxi drivers, craft and food vendors. It's up to you and me to keep St. Lucia away above the rest. Sharing your information is so important to grow our economy. We're on the move to improve. Call the Ministry of Tourism at 468-4629 to be part of this movement. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle a Creole. Mr. Madam Department, can you responsibility with formation and government service, GIS, as a television national payer, NTN, Kabuzato, Nouvelle, Akoyol. Kabuzato, Primus Hutchinson. Minister des Affaires Egalité, Justice Social et Gouvernement Local, a organisé un programme de étonnement à ce manière pour faire cet assessment en parmi les officiers qui engagés et puis travaillent du département Sala. Objectif, initiative là, c'était pour aider et impouver et habiliter les officiers qui ont opéré à ces diverses communes pour ça écrire ou rapport, à ces écrits ou rapport primaire, à ces les officiers qui ont les travailleurs sociaux et les travailleurs qui commençaient nouveau. C'est quoi là qui ni conduit division des affaires, services les hommes au ministère, à ces Beverly Ann Poyot qui était facilité exercer ça là. Selon Poyot, principale raison il prend décision là pour étonner ces officiers, c'est parce que Yo ni pour préparer rapport tous les jours pour présenter à Kai Lodias ni devant les magistrats et aussi à Kai Conseil. Devatement ka aussi préparer rapport pour adopter des enfants et pour moun qui a voudu prendre responsabilité des enfants qui ni besoin logement. Madame Poyot annonce aussi yo ka préparer rapport pour pays régional et international. Conseil est e très important qui ces rapports ça là ça écrit à d'ailleurs façon qui a dans haut degré. Il dit qu'il est pour présenter à de façon professionnelle pour sa trouver bon acceptance devant ces agences et organisations ni à celle-ci régionale et internationale. Selon Poyot, ces participants bienvenus à exercer cela tout bonnement et qui ont participé et puis en pile la théorie et il y a espoir qui se va pour cela qui a écrit encore trois primaires comme tu as venu. Naila James, qui est un officier qui est responsable pour agir et puis situation la famille la division remarquez qui étonnement renforcé importance pour toujours ni information qui doit les yon ka conduit ces assessments là il y a ces faiblesses là qui James mentionnait c'est manière aisée 
pour placer l'opinion avec manière ou même qu'à ouais une situation là qu'on peut pas avoir un assessment il y a vrai qui étonnement est ce que manière est très important pour assurer que on est rapport qui véritablement vrai et que ça de bout des assessments qui vous fait des jours étonnement tu peux comme que dit le 12 février et jeudi le 13 à bureau département sala Institut international des corporations agricoles ICA en collaboration collaboration et puis Institut pour développement et recherche agricole à Kaibla Kadi de tenir des jours exercices de ménagement concernant des façons pour bâtir capacité l'occasion des économiques en matériau des ordi hot plan examen atelier te ka placer attention à sur l'institut qui responsable pour jeunesse à pays par exemple ministère de agriculture Autorité de ménagement Zordi, les cultivateurs de Fama et le business. Greg Rollins, Hod Ica, parlait de manière yo qui a travaillé et l'institut là, qui a eu significance développement secteur agricole en région. Pour aussi, ça a poursuivi l'occasion pour jeunesse servir façon nouveau, pour tourner divers matériaux de Zordi dans yon façon de business. Rollins a créé aussi, objectif là, qui a renforcé la résilience de l'économie région pour adopter des technologies nouvelles et embrasser un système qui est sustainable pour ménager les matériaux des ordres en région Caribla. Le ministre des Affaires agricoles, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, déclare que attention, c'est pour garder toute façon des ordres qui sont sorti particulièrement hors des animaux, examiner ces diverses façons qui sont possibles pour servir et ménager et après ça, pour mettre à en opération. Ce participant est sorti en pays Belize, Jamaïque, Bahamas, Trinidad et Tobago, Guyana et cette ci Pays cette ci j'ai posé restrictions à ce résident pays Chine qui a voyagé sur la Chine comme maladie corona qui a porté mauvais virus pour la santé publique en degré international. Le comité de secours et l'organisation de santé mondiale organisée a décidé de voir une discussion à fin de ce mois janvier que la maladie de corona est une qui est très dangereuse et qui mérite de degré traitement ça Chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belmont George, dit que le département de santé, j'apprends toutes ces précautions qui sont nécessaires pour essayer d'empêcher la maladie de en tout cas, cette Selon Dr. Belmont George, je pense que la situation de la maladie a continué à affecter le pays international. Et pour raison cela, je conseille tout le pays pour prendre toutes les dégâts de précautions qui sont nécessaires. Pour raison cela, le département de santé, j'ai mis toutes sortes de qualités de précautions en place pour faire assurer que le pays a tous ces barres qui sont nécessaires pour protéger les citoyens. Dr. Belmont George a annoncé que depuis le 4 février 2020, le gouvernement s'est laissé, j'ai une restriction en place pour ne pas quitter les pièces résidentes de la Chine qui étaient à son voyage pour les derniers 14 jours de la Chine pour entrer en pays. Il dit que n'importe quel résident de la Chine qui ne chasse à entrer quand il trouve une surrection pour 14 jours. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder, pour vous avoir une invitation. Je vais vous conseiller de conserver la vie et de présenter une autre nouvelle à Creole. Merci à Pil Primus. Here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy and breezy, becoming cloudy at times with some scattered showers. The diet for Castries Harbour was low at 5.58 p.m. and will be high again at 1.04 a.m. The tide for VFOR Bay was low at 7.25 p.m. and will be high again at 2.11 a.m. The sea is locally rough with waves 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The Atlantic high pressure system will continue to generate moderate to brisk easterly winds and rough seas around the Eastern Caribbean region for the next few days. Moisture and instability in the lower levels of the atmosphere will cause occasional cloudiness and showers over the eastern Caribbean islands during the next 24 hours. The sun will rise Tuesday at 6.26 a.m. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.